Hello, Internet. This is Dave, and today we're going to do, uh, it's actually going to be a combination of a set review and a mock review, or maybe mocks, plural. The set we're going to review is set 41188 Elves Breakout from Goblin King's Fortress, which has 695 pieces. Yay! And here it is. Woohoo! Man. Built that pretty quick, didn't I? <laughs> so, uh, the reason I really wanted to uh, show off this set today was I wanted to use it as an example of something that I do in a lot of my mocking, and other mockers do it too, but I don't know if they do, do it to the degree that, say, these sets do it, or maybe my, my mocks do it. But the thing I really wanted to talk about today is visual language in a Lego build. So one of the things I really, really like about L sets, specifically like the, the architecture or the, the ones where there's like a building or some kind of structure to it, is L themes uses visual language beautifully. I love L sets for that. So what do I mean by, by visual language? It's kind of an overarching term for things like texture uh, or color blocking or getting, getting the shapes you, you want. It's kind of an umbrella term that I use for, for all of that stuff. It's a real good way to, to get a lot more detail and more, more going on in your mock with like maybe more colors or textures or different types of shaping. So maybe some areas you want something really angular or spiky and other areas you want things real smooth. And Employing visual language is something that you can do to get more out of your mock. Let's kind of get into this set in terms of what it's doing visually and what it's communicating with its visual language and then I'll, I'll bring some mocks over and we can see see how i've actually done that myself the first place we'll start with is color because like l sets are super colorful and they use colors really really well so um this set has a couple of cool uh functions as well that i'll show off while i'm working on that but as far as colors um the visual language is definitely strongest in terms of the colors that uh this set is using um every color is kind of color coded to sort of a certain idea you have the magenta here that's the leaves of your trees here then you have some red in there for the like the thorns and the spikes then dark blue is used on this set specifically to be like almost like tree bark I would say, um, because you have the stems of the trees here and here, but then you have like the arches here that, that kind of bend around this, uh, this portal way here. And then on the front you have it, they're tail pieces, but they're used as vines. So it, it's very much like, like a, um, like a tree bark almost. Then you have the, uh, spring green and that's the actual color of the building. So anywhere that you see spring green on this thing, that's physically the building that this is made of. And it has uh, black as sort of its accent color uh, with with grays kind of mixed in there for stone. Um, but on the front of the building, it's definitely like a, uh, a spring green building with sand green and black accents with all the dark blue and magenta and all that stuff adorning it um the sand green is used very sparingly mostly on the front here as just like your accent color like say the trim on your house or something like that so it's used very carefully there um and then even just your your very baseline colors like gray are used you know for like here's the rim of the portal and then on there's like a stone pathway here behind the Goblin King. What the hell? There's a stone pathway here that, that really shows like, hey, this is made out of stone. And then like maybe the brown here is wood, which is also then again communicated here in the, the, the jail cell and the boat. The boat is also very communicative of wood. 
They also use a little hint of Azure here to communicate that this uh, building is right on the edge of water. But like right here on the edges, it definitely shows that this is all water or, or that leading over the bridge, that would be water because castles typically have moats around them, right? So very smart to do that. Then the other small little accents of color that, that have been used in a very color-coded way is purple and lime. So you have these little piranha plant things, which I absolutely love this little mechanism right here, um, where the little piranha plants kind of chomp, chomp back and forth, and then you've got the one here on the end. One of the things I really love are the piranha plants here. Uh, and I think they did a great job of using purple, lime, and red to really communicate that, hey, these plants are, are, are this color. So having just the two here wouldn't really quite be enough to really solidify that. So over here on the corner, they, they added another, like, I guess, fully grown or, or more mature piranha plant that actually sticks out. And then you can open and close it and pose it kind of however you want which I think is really cool. Then this is a great example of how like they're communicating that same color scheme in literally two parts because the lime green flower piece sits underneath the uh, this purple ball joint that has a little mouth printed on it. So that's like a really like, like a baby or an infant piranha plant kind of thing going on there. And so there's all these neat little hints of color that really communicate further what is going on in this set. So you've got, you know, w uh, wood colors represented by brown, like in the bed post here. You've got the accent color of the building, you know, displayed in these fence pieces here. Uh, you've got stone work happening, like the fireplace. So obviously there's stone. And then here in like the rock work in this hidden building, that's another really good visual storytelling and visual language. There, there's very subtle hints of, of things happening within this set that are very brilliantly communicated with just the right just the right selection of parts. And so I really, really have to commend the uh, the designers who worked on this set. They did a great job. And, and elves, the, the, the designers of elves in general, like everything from like the second and third wave, I've yet to find an elf set that I really didn't like. I've been incredibly surprised by how good, I, by how much I liked elves. It really makes me sad that I did, didn't get into it sooner because I, I was asleep at the wheel on that one. But the other thing I really like about elf sets is they kind of tell a story through the set and, and Lego designers are really good at that. Um, uh, of really communicating what's happening with with the parts you're given as they're put together. So you have this figure. I don't know their names. I've never watched the show, so I'm sorry if I don't know their names. Uh, so she's she's trapped. This one's rescuing her. Goblin King's got a goblin here who's going to defend him, and he's defending the portal. So just with the way they actually have you construct the set, there's already a vi there's already a visual storytelling element. And then, you know, there's a secret passageway here that you can you can pull the crystal lever and then it'll open the passageway because what elf doesn't have a secret passageway? <laughs> and then, of course, you've got the, you know, moment of conflict or, or an element of conflict with the piranha plants because, you know, she's got to traverse her way past the piranha plants and past, past the guard to rescue her friend. And so just with... Four minifigures and a bunch of parts that are very easily able to communicate a story. And that's not something you do as much in Bionicle. Uh, but you certainly can with, say, multiple Bionicle characters. And you see that most, especially in my Plague Doctors. Definitely trying to tell a story there. And now we'll go ahead and move into looking at some mocks. And now we'll take a look at some mocks that I've built that use visual language in some way or another. Um, with the Dark Souls mimic, uh, the visual language is both used in the color blocking and in texture. Uh, for the chest itself, I wanted to be very smooth. 
uh, the parts for that lend itself really well. And it, and it really wanted to be mostly system. So it's really just plates, tiles, and uh, like snot bricks that really make up the bulk of this, this mock. Um, but for the actual mimic itself, I, I switched it out to uh, construction because that has a lot of like little deep crags and, and textures going on for it to really look different from the system element. And it just gave it a, a really different look. So I used CCBS for the, the limbs and then the tongue itself. Uh, as far as color blocking, you know, the tongue, of course, is dark red. The gums are dark red with the teeth being white, the limbs being gray. And I made his nails dark tan because even though I could have made those white, it, it really didn't make sense for the nails to be white as well. Um, I really wanted the teeth to stand out on their own, so I didn't want anything else really pulling the attention away from the teeth because, like, the teeth are really the first thing you're supposed to notice about the mimic when he's actually in mimic form. Um, and I won't do it now, but uh, the the legs come off the top and the, the, the arms and the uh, tongue come out. The teeth fold into the chest and then the whole thing closes so that it looks like a like a treasure chest. So that's the mimic. Next we'll look at Nerdly. Nerdly was one of my earlier attempts at trying to convey visual language. I knew I was gonna have to use a lot of different elements to make that work and get the right shapes going on. So there's system in here, there's technic, there's bionicle slash CCBS. Uh, it's all, like the only thing that's not in here is Duplo. Um, but everything, everything is on on this mock as far as uh, the different types of systems. I even used a, uh, a hockey torso to make the base of his chest and then I built it out using system and Technic and then the limbs themselves are just uh, CCBS. Um, but as far as uh, his legs, they had to be uh, solid because he's a bobblehead. So, uh, yeah, he's a bobblehead. Um, so I, I really didn't focus too much on texture with this mock just because, like, I had to really kind of pull everything out to make this mock work. And that meant kind of blending the different textures between, like, the smooth system, the chunkier or blockier technique where it's got the pinholes, CCBS for, like, the limbs and stuff like that. And then, of course, his feet are... Uh, Bionicle. Uh, the main focus on this mock was more uh, getting the colors right. Brown shoes, white socks, gray pants, black t-shirt. Uh, Nerdly's skin, if you want to call it that, is red. The actual icon of Nerdly is, of course, a, a two by two brick with the glasses, and it has like scotch tape keeping the glasses together. So that was uh, that was portrayed here with the white. And of course the glasses are black. So it was more about getting the colors to align more properly. So yeah, that's nerdly. The main mock I would like to focus on though is Remy. Because Remy is a mock where I really did use visual language throughout the mock, uh, both in terms of color, blocking, texturing, and just the overall just really thinking about the overall concept of trying to tell what this character is doing or has on him visually without having to explain it because if you can if your audience can understand what it is you've built without having to explain it if it's a grasshopper or if it's a ice dude or if you have to convey what the mock is through the description at some point you're going to lose your audience you're going to lose your general viewing audience they're not going to understand what it is it's happening the reason builders like myself and other notable builders get the kind of recognition they do is because we can we build our mocks to where they don't need a description you can look at it and almost instantly either know what it is or what it's about or kind of figure out oh hey that's a that's a that's a, a grasshopper or a motorcycle or that's a cool ice dude or a fire guy or you know Oh, that's a tree. Uh, the visuals convey 
95% of the information that need to be shown. But when you can really convey at a glance what is happening, then you've got something there. Over the years, I've definitely tried to work more on getting the visual language of my mocks more concise and more consistent and you know it's a process everybody learns over time and we just get better at our craft so now to get into Remy himself uh the the idea behind Remy was that he is a plague doctor styled on 15th century men's fashion they wore uh they wore tunics and tights so the tunic is basically a big flowy long sleeve t-shirt that more or less has a skirt um but it's all one article of clothing so for the tunic um i wanted it to look very fluffy and loose and even kind of wrinkly so that's why like his arms and stuff they're they're like extra poofy because that's the way that the the shoulders look the arms have extra little greebles and stuff like that just to add more textures and and m more going on on the arm than really needs to be there but the idea is that it's a very loose flowing shirt um then of course that's why i use this bionicle chest piece here because it had more little crevices and and areas for light and shadow to to bounce off of then you've got the hero factory armor there then if you get into the skirt the way i did that I used mixel ball joints on each on each basically each plate and they're kind of wedged in between plates to hold each other down and uh the main plate has tile on it to kind of finish it off and I got to say I really like it because it gives a very distinct visual um visual look to my mocks that uh going forward I'm definitely going to try and include this more because I really like the way it looks. And so the tunic is this fluffy, wrinkled shirt, but his tights ha had to be real smooth and more or less be the shape of what his legs more or less would be. The The thighs were pretty straightforward in that regard. The other, the other article of clothing that, that is the major element is his cape. Uh, then the the final element that really was the visual language as far as like color color scheme or color blocking was the 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 brown. So his feet use dark brown uh, because Lego doesn't make uh, reddish brown shoes. But even then, I'm I'm okay with that because if you really think about it, like think about the shoes you you wear the the pants the the watch the wallet or if you carry a purse that does everything line up color wise a hundred percent no there there might be like brass or silver or or something on your wallet or your shoelaces might have you know a certain color on it that the rest of your your pants or your shirt doesn't have maybe your watch is red when nothing else is who knows. But the thing is, if you really think about your your every the little details in your everyday outfit, they don't always line up a hundred percent. When I did his shoes, I even included a little bit of uh, gunmetal for for the buckles because I didn't want to use gold like I had elsewhere uh, to really show that like they are a different different article of clothing and they are a different item on his person. Uh, but for the gloves, the belt, and what is essentially his balaclava, which is kind of a hood that you wear over your head and that only that covers everything but your face, I used brown for that to really show that like it's all leather. So when I built Remy, I I definitely wanted to include that concept of of having like brown gloves or brown belt and other other elements of him wear their leather and I really like that because just that little splash of brown really helps liven up the color scheme from the the dark blue and the the white but there there's another example of you of using a different color than what your your core color scheme is to uh portray a visual language and the nice thing about visual language is 
or, or when you utilize visual language is it's a way to get more into your mock. So instead of keeping it everything ultra smooth and and being sort of a one one note as far as what visual elements you're representing, you could get in there and, and and portray multiple visual elements like I did here, where this part is smooth, but this part is not. The same is true for colors. You know, if I said, okay, this is a white and dark blue mock. Okay, well, then if I really, if I didn't expand my horizons on what could really be on a mock, he would have been just dark blue and white with maybe some black for like the structural stuff. But because I, I thought about it, like, well, you know what? He could have a different color gloves or his shoes would be their own color. So thinking about what kind of things might be on his person or, or thinking about him as like an everyday life kind of character really helped me figure out that, you know, he really could have a brown belt and brown glove. And of course, his shoes would want to be brown because he'd get mud on them or dirt and other stuff. <laughs> it, it really helped me think about what I could include on the character besides his core color elements. Um, one of the things I see on mocks that just, it's not wrong, but you can definitely do more with it is you can go beyond two tone colors. You can go beyond a core color scheme. You know, you can really think about your character as a living, breathing person, even if they're not necessarily human, even if they're uh, like a Makuta or whatever, you know, if he's the guardian of a stronghold, well, he might have a ring of keys. He might have to unlock doors. He might have to carry a sword because what if there's an intruder, you know? And if he's carrying a sword, he's got to have a place to keep that sword, right? So maybe he's got to have a sheath or, uh, you know, some kind of belt to hold the sword. Well, there you go. You can make the sword a different color. You can make the belt a different color. You could really get into a lot of fun details with your mock by really just thinking about them as a living, breathing creature. And that really expands the possibilities of what you're able to build and really include other elements into the build itself because you're, you're thinking about those minute details and those minute details are opportunities to build in a way that's different from the core character. You know, you can really have a lot of fun thinking about that kind of stuff because it, it just gives you great ways to really add more to the mock. Okay, so that's gonna conclude it for this video, I think. And just remember, visual language is something you can include in mocks, and you definitely see it in Lego sets. So if you, if you have some elf sets, or maybe you wanna pick up some elf sets, remember, you can grab these, and they're great examples of how to use visual language in your building, and then you can take those concepts and those ideas and then apply them to mocks. Goodbye, Internet. This is Dave, also known as Mana Ramp the Torrent, and I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please drop a like on it and leave a comment in the comment box down below. And if you would like to see more of my videos, you can do so by clicking on the links in the outro card here. Thanks, and have a great day.